Thank you, Thank you very much for your introduction, and then I would like to express my uh, sincere appreciation to Sophie Young uh, to uh, let me to, let me uh, give a talk in this wonderful symposium. And the title of my talk is exactly like this. I was wondering whether, whether I should talk about voltage-dependent calcium channels because whenever I talk about trip channels, uh, it makes and it mad. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't know you were talking in front of me. So. But anyhow, this is the title of my talk today. And uh, it's not working. Okay, fine. And I don't think that any introduction is necessary for my talk because already Jan Yan has made a beautiful introduction. And I'm going to talk about trip channels. And trip channels, as you know, in mammalian system, there are at least 28 members, which, is, uh, which are uh, classified into six subfamilies. And structurally, uh, no, this is not necessary either. Uh, six transmembrane helix. Uh, they, this is uh, te basically determinalized to form calcium and sodium cation permeable on channel four, uh, like this. And um, in our case, we have been mainly focused on trip M family and trip C family for uh, nearly 20 years. But then occasionally, I go to uh, different types of uh, different subtypes of both uh, trip channels. And, and today, I'm just going to talk on trip A1 and trip A4. To functionally characterize, uh, we have been mainly used as recombinant system, knockout cells, and knockout mass. And according to our own data, and also according to the data obtained by a number of groups, uh, numerous groups of in the, all around the world, uh, we think that there are two important functional aspects of trip channel. And the first aspect is their calcium permeability. We think that many trip channels can be considered as so-called non-classical calcium channels, uh, different from the classical voltage-dependent calcium channels, or classical calcium permeable neurotransmitter receptor channels. And the second important functional aspect is, of course, uh, their biosensing function. Biosensing function, we can consider trip channels as biosensors, which can detect diverse changes in the extracellular environment and the condition inside the cell. And I don't think this slide is necessary either. Uh, representative biosensing trip channel is, of course, trip B1, the capsaicin receptor. But as you know, this uh, trip B1 is also a thermal sensor for heat together with uh, some of other members in the same family. In terms of cold sensation, at least two members have been uh, presented to be have to play important roles in, in cold sensation. And in case of trip A1, trip A1 is very interesting because it is also very, very sensitive to uh, pungent electrophiles such, such as LSN and allyl isothiocyanate, AITC, contained in mustard oil extracts or uh, uh, different kinds of vegetables such as onions. How about redox sensitivity of trip channels? Uh, in other words, can trip channels uh, function as targets of redox reactive species? And the answer is yes, and we're kind of proud to say that we are, we are among those first to identify the so-called real, true, oxidation-sensitive trip channel, redox-sensitive trip channel, and that was trip M2. This simply summarizes what we uh, proposed in 2002, which got a lot, lot of uh, criticism, and, and, and according to our own data, we had to revise this scheme quite significantly, and now we, we think that because the stress and reactive oxygen species converts NADH into NAD+. And through uh, multiple routes, this NAD+, to convert into ADP ribose. And this ADP ribose acts on MUTD motif to open up the channel. And when calcium sodium come in to be overloaded, it causes cell death, as indicated in the picture shown on the right side here. But now we know that there are multiple regulators for this trip M2 channel, even in response to hydrogen peroxide. Temperature above 35 degrees is essential. Uh, recently, uh, Peter McNaughton's group um, reported a very beautiful uh, paper uh, on the sensation for the warmth. And also, direct oxidation of the protein, trip M2 protein itself, and in addition, associated proteins are also very important to regulate, upregulate the activity of trip M2. And at the same time, calcium permeating from the, through, the, through its own ion channel pore is very important to also enhance or optimize the activation of trip M2. But we think that the most important issue here well, is that this oxidation-sensitive trip channel, trip M2 channel, is not only important for cell death, but at the same time, it is also this, uh, important for multiple cellular, cellular responses, and that was in our case 
uh, in inflammatory cellular responses. So certainly TRPM2 is a very important oxidation sensitive TRP channel. But when we further went into the study, we found multiple, a number of TRP channels that show extensive oxidation sensitivity. But in their case, they, took, they, took, they take completely a different sensing mechanism that was oxidative modification of cysteine soft headers, such as nitrostation, hydroxidation, uh, disulfire formation, and further oxidation. Quite interestingly, cysteine residues responsible for this sensitivity uh, are localized in three different sites. The major site is, according to our uh, experiment, is, the, is, is, near, is near the uh, pore forming region. But in case of trip A1, B2, and B1, they have extensive sustained residues and, and terminus anchor, and anchor may be facing on the cytoplasmic side. And trip A1, trip A1 is very interesting because trip A1 has sustained residues responsible for oxidation sensitivity uh, in C terminal region facing on the cytoplasmic side as well, in addition to N terminus and QRP, and also pore forming region in case of rat trip, uh, trip B1. In addition to reactive oxygen species and nitrogen species, all these uh, system targeting reactive compounds, some of them are artificial compounds, some of them are, they are natural compounds, some of, some of them are endogenously produced, uh, uh, produced regulated mediators, and these are all powerful activators for oxidation sensitive trip channels because they can all electrophilically attack electron lone pairs on cysteine soap heteros. And among them, uh, this series of molecules, uh, reactive disulfides, turned out to be a very interesting molecule to quantify oxidation sensitivity of trip channels. And, I, and we think that uh, uh, something we did uh, for trip channel, uh, we can apply to the other channels or other proteins as well. And this is a structure for different kinds of reactive disulfides. The common structure is, of course, disulfide, but they have different chemical groups attached on the, uh, on the both sides. Uh, with, uh, which uh, confers different, different oxidation ability for different, uh, different reactive um, uh, disulfides. And their oxidation ability can be somewhat uh, quantified as redox potential values shown on the right side. But please note that this is not a standard value. This is a value obtained by using compounds at uh, concentration of 10 micromolar for single electron reduction using rotating disk electrovoltanometry silver and silver chloride electrode. And when these molecules were applied uh, one by one to different trip channels, uh, you can have a very nice and interesting relationship between redox potential value for different uh, reactive disulfides on the x-axis and, and calcium elevation due to calcium influx activation of different types of uh, trip channels on the y-axis. And when the data points were analyzed using at least three-year method, uh, you can have very nice lines which have intercepts against x-axis. And we think that these and the values against x-axis are the so-called <coughs> oxidation threshold for uh, respective trip channels, which is summarized on the right side here. Now, according to the summary, we can say that trip A1 is the most oxidation-sensitive trip channel which can be even activated by a compound uh, let's see, like, like this, which, you th which is quite an inert um, uh, oxidant or electrophile. And then comes the capsaicin receptor trip one So trip one is, is also very oxidation sensitive. And then comes P4, and this is so-called receptor activated calcium primeval channel trip C5. And then again, some of those uh, so-called uh, thermosensing channels, trip B3 and trip B2 among only four uh, oxidation-sensitive trip channels. So uh, most of the trip channels, are, uh, according to our view, are, are quite resistant to oxidation. So how about uh, oxygen-sensing trip channels? Then we tested, uh, we uh, tried to measure single electron uh, re reduction uh, redox potential value for molecular oxygen. It came around here and here. So clearly predicting that only trip A1 can respond to molecular oxygen through oxidative, oxidative modification of sustained cell heteros. And to validate this prediction, we just simply applied hyperoxic solution to different kinds of trip channels and assay the calcium influx activity using uh, the conventional calcium indicator for two to nicely to uh, show that, that only trip A1 can respond to hyperoxic solution. 
And the original uh, uh, purpose for us to test hypoxic solution is just complete dose response curve for of, uh, against a molecular oxygen concentration of trip A1. So we uh, applied hypoxic solution to the same trip chain expression system and using the same assay system quite puzzling and quite uh, surprisingly, again, only trip A1 showed robust calcium influx response to hypoxia. Okay. And this is a relationship between uh, partial pressure of molecular oxygen against uh, calcium elevation due to calcium influx activity of trip A1. And this is a normoxic range of, uh, a normoxic range of oxygen availability near at the uh, sea level. Uh, clearly, uh, trip A1 can detect and respond to hypoxia and hyperoxia. So trip A1 has a very unique oxygen dependence. And this is a, a summary for uh, no chemical or molecular mechanism underlying oxygen function sensing function of trip A1, according to our uh, different kinds of experiments, biochemical and electrophysiological, and also imaging experiments. And we now think that normoxia, in normoxia, proline hydroxylases, PhDs use uh, molecular oxygen as, subs as a substrate to uh, hydroxylate the proline residue 394 in case of human trip A1. And this inhibits the activation of trip A1. But uh, however, in case of hypoxia, because substrate for PhDs uh, are not there anymore, pH uh, proline is not hydroxylated, and this relieves trip A1 from the inhibitory reaction of proline hydroxylation to open up the channel. And then uh, this channel, open channel, causes uh, uh, an influx of sodium, calcium, and the mem membrane potential depolarization, and also probably action potential generation in the expression sites of the trip A1, such as uh, vagus and also sense some of sense uh, some of the sensory neurons. In case of hyperoxia, uh, there are a bunch of molecular oxygen substrates for PhDs. Proline is hydroxylated. At the same time, two cysteine residues are oxidized. Both are qu quite close to the transmembrane region, but it looks like that uh, uh, they to, to cysteine residues are a little, bit, a little bit separated from each other. One is cysteine 603, and the other is cysteine 856 in the case of human trip A1 protein. <coughs> and this oxidization uh, overrides the inhibitory reaction of proline hydroxylation to open up the channel, which permits sodium and calcium to cause membrane potential depolarization and action potential ge generation eventually. And we were simply interested in the vagus because nodal ganglion is one of the most abundant expression sites for trip A1. And as you know, uh, nodal ganglion has a soma for uh, the vagus, vagal neurons. And these vagal neurons are project to the airway trachea and the line. And it was also reported before we started the experiment using trip A1 knockout mice that trip A1 detects pungent electrophiles and also some strong oxidants such as ozone to cause respiratory reflexes and respiratory rate depression. So we want to test whether uh, some changes in oxygen availability uh, is mediated by trip A1 expressed there. The first thing we did was a false uh, false attachment method to isolate native trip A1 currents in response to hyperoxia and hypoxia. Application of this ramp pulse uh, were able to uh, allow us to measure current voltage relationship, relationship shown here, here, and here. And as you can see, number one traces are before stimulation by hyperoxia or hypoxia. And number three traces are after stimulation, uh, meaning that uh, two minus one traces are the so-called current voltage relationship uh, traces upon stimulation with hyperoxic and hypoxic solution. Now you can see very clearly in wild type nodal ganglion neurons, there are nice two minus one current voltage relationship traces, uh, uh, which were nearly flattened in trip A1 non-calcium uh, uh, nodal ganglion neurons. So hyperoxia and hypoxia is very li are very likely to activate native trip A1 channel current in mouse nodal ganglion neurons. And we also looked at the uh, vagal nerve discharges in vivo uh, and also maintained oxygen availability through, through tracheal intubation. And as you can see here, 20% normoxia uh, change to 100% uh, oxygen hyperoxia cause significant elevation, enhancement of vagal nerve discharges, which is summarized on the right side here for the wild type mice, but not in trip A1 knockout mice which is summarized again here in the, in the bottom in the graph. 
And similar to 100% oxygen, in relatively mild hypoxia, wild type might show enhancement of vagal nerve discharges like this, but QFA1 knockout might fail to show such an uh, adaptive response. And quite interestingly, in more severe hypoxia, QFA1 knockout mice show similar enhancement of vagal nerve discharges. And we uh, also looked at respiratory frequency uh, for wild type mice for the strip a versus TRIPA1 knockout mice. And in case of wild type mice, hyper hyperoxia caused decrease of respiratory frequency by count of, of 40 to 50, and hypoxia caused uh, enhancement elevation of of uh, respiratory frequency by count of 40 up to 70. Uh, however, in case of trp one knockout mice, these adaptive, re adaptive responses were nearly <coughs> absent except for the severe hypoxia, rem reminiscent of what I showed for the vagal nerve discharges. So uh, as a conclusion for, my, for, for the first part of my talk, uh, we think that uh, the Vegas and trp one expressed in the project, their projected sites its projected site are, uh, are very, are play important roles in hy uh, sensing hyperoxia and mild hypoxia. So we think that uh, this mechanism is, is a sensor for uh, oxygen availability, relatively di uh, direct uh, uh, sensor for uh, the changes of availability in the atmosphere. Of course, you can never forget about the character body and, glom and character body glomus cells. And as far as we tested with the, uh, with the mouse system, it is, very, it, is, it is likely that uh, the character body glomus cells are more responsible for some, some somewhat severe hypoxia compared to the trip A1 in the Vegas. And in their case, they detect oxygen availability, availability as you know, uh, through uh, oxygen availability in the bloodstream. So certainly, trip A1 is an, a very inter inter interesting and important, physiological, physiologically important uh, oxidation sensitive trip channel. How about other uh, trip channels? So uh, we also looked at trip B1, and trip B1, as I said, is a, a capsaicin receptor and also a thermosensor for heat, for sure. But um, as you can see here, trip B1 is, is the second is, is ranked as the second trip uh, channel which is uh, which is sensitive to oxidation. And in fact, uh, it can respond to hydrogen peroxide, different kinds of reactive oxygen species, reactive nitrogen species, and nitric oxide, and also uh, pungent electrophiles as well. And quite interestingly, uh, in case of human mouse, human mouse uh, trip B1, uh, two regions have cysteine residues responsible for oxidation sensitivity. In case of rat trip B1, it has, in addition, uh, cysteine 621 uh, as a as a sustained review, which is also responsive to oxidation. So we uh, just simply try to understand what are the roles for these uh, sustained residues in terms of oxidation sensitivity and, 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 and uh, function of trip B1. So something we did is a very simple experiment. We ran a protein gel for human trip B1, expressed in hex cells, and it gives a very nice band right around here. Uh, major band, and there is also a fainter band right around the tail, which this exactly correspond to, corresponds to the monomeric form of trip B1, but uh, this is almost double in terms of molecular weight. And this intense band was uh, complete, near, completely abolished by addition of reducing agents such as DTT. And when you compare to the, uh, uh, to the lane uh, added, added, added with a chemical cross-linker DTSS, you can say that this band corresponds to the protein complex, which is dimerized uh, through disulfide bond. So as a next step, we try to uh, characterize the cysteine residue uh, responsible for disulfide formation. And we're, uh, we're able to identify two, uh, four cysteine residues, cysteine 158, 258, and 306, 63, and also 742 in the satrium region. As a candidate, as candidate, the system reduced to form uh, disulfide structure to uh, further form di uh, the dimeric structure in human trip, trip, trip B1. And what was the uh, functional impact for this uh, dimerization and disulfide formation? We uh, just tested with the DTT reducing agent, and this reducing agent DTT shifted uh, uh, dose response curve of trip A1 to 
capsaicin to a higher concentration, meaning that sensitivity of ca to capsaicin is decreased or increased by the formation of disulfide structure responsible for dimeric formation. A similar experiment was done for the mutants, and we found that two mutations uh, in for the cysteine 258 and also cysteine 742 uh, and diminish uh, the or actually uh, shift the uh, uh, those respond to a higher concentration of capsaicin. And similar observation we found for also for the temperature rises and the heat um, application. So, so far we did uh, some kind of uh, indirect experiment, uh, mainly employing uh, a mutant. So we, wa we wanted to use a more direct method. And so we used uh, selected reaction monitoring SRMM methods, uh, which simply starts with the digestion of protein by trypsin, in our case, human trp one expressed in, in hex cells, and applied the fragments to liquid chromatography and mass spectrometry. And the number of molecules uh, reaching the detector was quantified looking at the mass spec data. And the two forms, the reused form and oxidized form, including disulfide structure, was compared by using two different agents, and until malamide and also yield acetamide. In case of a reduced form, sulfhydryl is quite sensitive to uh, the modification by N, but this is, this is not reduced by DTT, and of course is insensitive to CAM modification. In case of oxidized form, it is insensitive to NEM uh, modification, but reversed by DTT, and then uh, after uh, reduction, uh, CAM is very important to uh, modify uh, this, uh, now, this form. So we can basically uh, look, uh, d distinguish the two forms by looking at mass spec data. And we'll, we also use another trick because uh, we wanted to uh, finally com uh, compare the experiment, uh, I mean, compare the system reduce. So we stick to the system 742S mutation. So this, is, this may be kind of a cheat and uh, looked at the effect of this uh, mutation for, uh, for the uh, oxidization of three kinds of uh, peptides containing cysteine 258, cysteine 363, and cysteine 158. And as you can see here clearly, uh, the ratio of oxidized form versus reduced form is significantly changed in case of this, pe uh, this peptide containing cysteine 258 somewhat uh, uh, in, in, in good con uh, consistent with our prediction and in contrast to the peptides con carrying cysteine 363 and cysteine 158. So we simply applied uh, these data to the, to the recently obtained a uh, three-dimensional structure by David Julius and his collaborators. And you can see, clearly see that the diso there are two pairs of disulfo di disulfide bond in case of the, tr the dramatic structure of human uh, trip one Now, what would be the redox status of the two rest of the two pairs of cysteine 258 and cysteine 742 that are not involved in the intersegment disulfide formation? And to address this, uh, we again used uh, uh, a technique, uh, a simple technique, 5 nitro 2 bds modification for cysteine reduce. And after modification, we analyze this, uh, this, uh, this protein band uh, very close to the dimeric form. And clearly you can see that this uh, reduced form is completely abolished by the modification of this agent. So to summarize, Two pairs of cysteine 258 <coughs> and cysteine 742 form disulfide structure responsible for intracellular dimerization for sure in a tetrameric human trip B1 channel. And we think that this disulfide formation is very important to enhance capsaicin sensitivity. And as I didn't show the data, uh, this also dim this dimer dimerization uh, is able to enhance stability of the complex. And how about two other pairs? The, uh, two other pairs in, is, are, in a reduced form, are in reduced form, sulfhydryl that confers the sens sensitivity to oxidative electro electrophilic modification leading to channel activation because uh, the mod modification concentration and looking at, uh, uh, at, at, at mass spec and also looking at uh, physiological recording completely, completely matched. Okay so, okay, so we think that uh, after our experiments, 
something we think that uh, about human tetra uh, human TP1 channel, which is usually said homomeric in terms of molecule, but now they are not homomeric. As a matter of fact, they are heteromeric in terms of, of chemical modification. And as you know, that this reported three-dimensional structure is obtained by uh, using uh, reducing, uh, I think, reducing agent. And probably I have to ask John about that. But probably mo in most cases, uh, three-dimensional structures are obtained by using uh, obtained in and re re reducing conditions. So uh, personally, it is very interesting for us to see uh, how it, it will it will look like for uh, this tetrameric structure of 4 p one and also p one as well. Okay, so I would like to finally acknowledge my colleague, and Takahashi did most of the p one work for the oxygen sensitivity, and Nozomi Ogawa did uh, most of the work for uh, p one and both were my previous uh, uh, PhD students, and we are very happy that they are uh, spending very nice uh, academic and also uh, industrial life in, in, in Japan. And I would like to finally acknowledge your kind attention. Thank you very much. So perhaps uh, we have some time for questions for Professor uh, Mori. Just uh, do I need the redox treatments also the pH? Well, this time we, did, we haven't done anything for that. And of course, trip one that would that would be a very interesting question, you know, and also it, it, that is also the case for trip one because they both are sensitive to uh, pH, but we haven't done that yet. Buffer. So in, the, uh, in our case, usually uh, measurements are done in HEBS buffer. So, uh, of course, we, we are very uh, careful about the pH because, as you said, that uh, especially trip one is known as a proton sensor as well. And also, we are very careful about temperature as well. So we never try to go up to higher temperature or to the low, low temperature in case of trip one to be activated uh, by itself. Uh, PPA1 is uh, specifically overexpressed in some cancer cells and specifically in uh, lung adenocarcinoma. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just uh, thinking, maybe it's uh, oxygen and redox sensitivity has something to do to, to that phenomenon, not this cancers that specifically exposed to high oxygen concentrations. Yeah, I think that's a very good point. Uh, recently, uh, I have somewhat collaboration with uh, uh, Bridges Group in, in Harvard. And, and actually, Nobuaki Takashi as a fourth also showed that hydrogen peroxide plays a very important role uh, through, in his case, trip A1 to exacerbate uh, cancer. And, um, but um, well, of course, we don't know so much about trip A1, but it's quite possible that uh, through this mechanism, uh, at least reactive oxygen species are uh, may some influence for the malignancy of trip A1. Because, uh, as you, as you know, in reducing condition, usually malignancy is, is rise, and then, and, but this is probably due to one of the counteraction against oxidation, uh, probably, probably uh, uh, derived from the attack of some of the neutrophils and so on. So maybe one last quick question. Yeah. Do you think the, the data survival bonds between the subunits form uh, in the ER before trafficking, or do you think <coughs> Honestly, uh, we don't still don't know about the uh, discrete discrete mechanism for that. And uh, so, something I showed you today is is basically uh, 3P1 preparation obtained from from the whole whole cell whole, whole, whole cell lysate. So I, I just can say say you that uh, the major protein complex is is the di dimer when you uh, run on the gel. Okay, so maybe in the interest of time, maybe just thank our speaker, Professor Moro, for a great talk. Thank you. Thank you.